three years ago, I made a video called Causing Chaos and Genshin Impact, in which I hopped into the world of the monumentally successful open world fantasy RPG that I had been hearing about nonstop from both my best friend Sarah and from the internet in general. And I honestly had a really great time. But after that video came out and work carried on, I completely lost time to keep exploring Genshin, which really did suck. I had always wanted to just get lost in an RPG and Genshin seemed perfect for it. Big, bright, colorful world, tons of characters, real-time action combat, which is my preferred kind of RPG battling, blah, 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 but no more. For today, I have been given a second chance at greatness. Genshin Impact reached out to sponsor a video. At last! An excuse to spend most of my work week playing Genshin again. <laughs> but you know, uh, first time around, I wasn't really the greatest at the game, so maybe this time I should try out the co-op and ask Sarah for a few pointers. But yes, today's video is sponsored by Genshin Impact, the, uh, monumentally successful open world fantasy RPG in which you play as a traveler in the world of Tabat, fighting monsters, going on missions, gathering new characters to play as, and mastering seven powerful elemental magic abilities to help the people of Tabat and hopefully find your long lost sibling. The game is available across tons of platforms and even has cross play between PC, mobile, PlayStation 4, and PlayStation 5, which will, uh, you know, come in handy for the co-op since I'm playing on my PS5 and Sarah plays on a PC, whatever. And now's a great time to either start start your Genshin journey or dive back in like I am because tons of new content is dropping with the new 4.5 patch. There's a brand new character being added named Chiori, a dual wielding sword fighting seamstress. Then there's a new webpage event called Discover Traces Explore Nature, where players can earn special rewards like Primo gems and exclusive furnishings for the in-game housing feature, Serena Teapots. Clever, cute, I see you. And all that doesn't even mention the Tavat Nature Discovery Tour. Yes, Genshin is teaming up with the Discovery Channel to take players through the various natural habitats of Tavat via a tour documentary, all to spread the message of kindness and altruism towards the world and those who live in it. Isn't that nice? So if all that sounds cool to you, just head down to the top link in this video's description to download Genshin for yourself and start your adventure. The game is totally free to play, so you got nothing to lose. Again, that is Genshin Impact, available to download for free at the link below. Major thanks to Genshin for sponsoring, and now, uh, well, back to Genshin. So what all went down the last time I played Genshin Impact? Well, I was randomly sent to the world of Tavat after being separated from my twin sister after this scary person turned us into cubes. I met Paimon, the squeaky voiced fairy thing that accompanies me on my mission. We saw this person wearing green who was hanging out with this giant blue dragon, but then that dragon got real angry, flew off, and eventually attacked the nearby city of Mondstadt. We met some new characters like Amber, Kaya, and Lisa who all joined my adventure party, and after a few battles and a dungeon, we had completed the game's prologue. And then a little while later, I played for a while off camera where I learned more about the dragon and the green dude. Yeah, everyone in Mondstadt calls this dragon Storm Terror. There's some kind of elemental dragon who had been protecting Mondstadt for ages. But when they went AWOL and attacked, it left a lot of the officials unsure of what to do. Some wanted to help him, others wanted to slay him, and I was there. Hey guys, I know we have like a blue dragon problem and everything, but I'm, 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 I'm still looking for my sister. Is there any way that we could maybe- Look, there's that green guy! Go! Get him! Kill it! Ugh, fine. So I tracked Green Guy down and found out that he's actually a bard named Venti, and he has some kind of special link with Storm Terror, or as he calls him, Devalin. He calls him that because it's his name. So Venti joins our group to help figure out what's going on. A lot of us get this magical harp called the Holy Liar and use it to summon Devalin, finding out that he's being manipulated and corrupted by these weird abyss mage creatures. You remember those? <laughs> and so as I re-enter the world of Genshin Impact, remembering to actually capture the gameplay footage this time, I have my mission, figure out how to find and free Devalin. But first, I finally reached adventure rank 16, which means instead of pursuing the ever pressing mission ahead of me, I can hang out with my my friend! Yeah, once you get your adventure rank up to 16, you unlock the co-op. So at long last, I was able to call up my friend and longtime Genshin Impact fan Sarah to help me out. We link up through the game's co-op world joining feature and immediately, immediately, I feel so far behind. Sarah is level 50. 50! I just hit level 16, man. And she's not hiding it either. She's showing off all these different characters I've not even met yet. The first character she used had a special attack that summoned an electric purple ghost wolf that fought for them? Excuse me? Why don't I get a spooky familiar? Well, with her superiority having been well established, Sarah and I head off to fight some stuff. And let me tell you, having another player helping me out in these fights was insanely useful. I mean, I'm definitely better at this game than I was last time. I've leveled up, I've ascended my characters, I've enhanced my weapons, I've learned how 
button works. And I can hold my own in a battle pretty dang well, as long as I have enough health items on hand. Ah, meat skewers. Health food. But man, Sarah is absolutely just destroying everything in her path. Keep in mind, the enemies are still leveled to be beatable by me, but that means she's just ripping through even the biggest monsters in like two hits. Seriously, I fought one of these big wooden robot monsters on my own and it took like 15 minutes. I did it, but it took forever. Sarah swoops in and it's over before I can even land a hit. She is killing it. Just completely overqualified for this job. I is this how strong I'm gonna get if I keep playing the game? Dang. So the two of us explore for a bit and tackle some challenges around the map called Ley Lines. We hit up a domain, which is basically a challenge dungeon that you have to activate these elemental pillars to gain access to, etc, etc. And our teamwork is really starting to click. Remember in my first Genshin video when this happened? Ooh, is this another one of those wind tunnels that's gonna like fling me up into the sky? <laughs> oh, okay. Apparently not. Apparently it was a wall. Or maybe a trampoline considering how far back I flew. Yeah. Well, Sarah swaps to... Yeah, Venti? She, she just has Venti? I haven't even been able to play as him once. Dang. But as Venti, she's able to create an instant air boost that just lets me shoot way up into the air and fall right inside these pillars so I can get the treasure or activate the doohickey, whatever. I definitely would not have known that I could have done that playing on my own. I for sure would have assumed that I needed to like go turn the air off somewhere. I'm not very smart. Yeah, speaking of wind puzzles, I guess one of the coolest things she and I did was stumble across this big arch kind of thing made out of fallen trees. And sitting right under them is a treasure chest. And not one of those dingy treasure chests that I've been finding around the map. This is one of those fancy ones. I gotta open it. Man, man, I really don't learn, do I? There's not just one, but three giant air domes surrounding this chest. You can't drop in from the top and you can't get in from the sides, which means we have to find a way to turn the air off. I knew it. Why does Paimon keep getting saddled with the idiots? So Sarah and I run around and find out that we're in the middle of three enemy strongholds. And every time we defeat the crop of monsters at each spot, an elemental pillar unlocks, allowing us to turn off one of the three domes surrounding the treasure chest. Of course, with Sarah having the power of a god, this was barely even a struggle. Three domes down, and with that, we can enjoy our spoils. And of course, by we, I mean me. Sarah can't open chests or collect stuff in my world, so even though she did most of the work, I get all the benefits. Ha! Sucks to suck. But seriously, playing with a friend has been super fun and has helped me learn way more about how to make the most out of playing Genshin. Like, look at this. Sarah and I can combine our attacks and make crazy elemental nightmares like fire tornadoes. Fire tornadoes! That's just the coolest thing. But to give me more of a fighting chance, Sarah does decide to swap to a few characters she hasn't leveled up quite as much. Like this magical wind girl, and this character who plays guitar and shoots off fireworks. That one's my favorite. I, I gotta unlock her at some point. But then Sarah decides to swap to this character named Sayu. Oh cool, another character with air powers. I... Uh... Okay. Uh, goodbye. I, I, I guess that's the end of Sarah. Oh, no, wait, here she comes. Wait, ah, uh, no, no, def def definitely, definitely gone. Well, I, uh, I guess I should get back to all the, you know, very important story missions where the fate of Mondstadt is at risk. <sighs> Fine. But first, uh, I have no idea where I am. Yeah, me and Sarah just kind of went wherever, and now I have no clue where I'm at. <laughs> yeah, the closest area with any missions to do took me to this spooky forest full of ghost enemies. But also while I was here, I found more of those elemental pillars, but with a new emblem I've never seen before. Fire, ice, air, and ghost electricity don't work on it. And based on the like design and color, my assumption is that I'll have to come back here when I have a character that control the earth. Basically, I, I need a dirt guy. But as I started making my way back towards Mondstadt, I found and activated one of these statues. This is a statue of the seven. Activating them just kind of creates a fast travel spot on the map, but worshiping these statues can bring you upgrades like increased stamina. But uh, this one being in a new area of the map actually gave me the power to swap elements. I had no idea that was even a thing. But wait, that means, that means I don't need a dirt guy. I'm the dirt guy. Check this out. Oh my god, that's awesome! So, with my newfound Earth powers unlocked, I completely forgot to go back to that pillar and just went back to Mondstadt. <laughs> oh man, I'm never, I'm never gonna get good. I'm never gonna get good. <laughs> but once I'm back on my usual turf, I meet up with Venti, D. Luke, that red-haired dude from the last episode, and Jean, the Grandmaster of the Knights of Favonius, aka the Protectors of Mondstadt. She's a big deal. And a lot of us hatch a plan to track down and help Dvalin. And our plan takes us to this big, absolutely impenetrable wall of air. 
Oh, oh, I know this one. We gotta, we gotta turn the air off. So Venti, being a bard, plays a magical tune on his lyre, which opens up the path forward, bringing us into Storm Terror's lair. Ooh, I'm getting end of chapter boss fight vibes already. Yeah, after running around, fighting some monsters, activating some magic stuff, and scaling the entire tower, I enter the lair proper, and the fight with Devalin begins. Oh, dude, this is cool. We're doing like the flying shoot em up fight again. I remember this. This is one of the first big fights from the very beginning of the game. We're going full circle. That's cute. What I gotta do is fly around and shoot these big purple blood clots on Devalin's back. No, uh, seriously, th that's what they're called in game blood clots. Devalin, dude you gotta see a doctor about that. Blood clotting along the spine is insanely serious. Take care of yourself. Yep. Yeah, anyway, I shoot at the glowing purple spikes on Devalin's back, working his health bar down as far as I can, and then the real fight starts. High up in the air on these floating platforms. And what's cooler is the game finally lets me play as Venti, who, uh, despite being very protective of Devalin this entire game so far, has this bow and arrow weapon that is absolutely wrecking him. That, or all that co-op play just made me an absolute Genshin Impact master. I don't know, maybe column A, column B. And as Devalin goes down, the platforms crumble and the whole team starts tumbling through the chaotic stormy winds. We might could die. But luckily, Devalin, now free from his corruption, swoops in to save us all and take us back to Mondstadt before leaving to be free. And the day is saved! But it's not all happy endings, because we also get a cutscene of the Abyss Mages who were corrupting Devalin reporting back to their boss. Oh! No, wait! That's my twin sister! How do I keep forgetting about her? She's the villain? Ooh, that's cool. And that's where we're gonna cut it off for today. But if you wanna see what happens next, don't forget that you can play Genshin Impact for yourself by checking out the very top link in this video's description. Check out the game and all the new updates. I promise these videos have barely scratched the surface of everything Genshin has to offer. So thanks again to Genshin Impact for sponsoring. Thank you guys for watching and uh, leave.